Next up, we're going to work on our about and contact page. So first we're going to start with the about page. We're going to duplicate our pricing page. We'll rename it to about. Then we'll start editing the text for our hero section. And then we're going to remove the pricing grid, of course, because we don't need this. And we'll remove the enterprise section too. Then we're going to drag and drop our image, our sort of cover image for this page. We'll add a radius. We'll add a subtle border. And we'll also add a subtle shadow. Going to rename our image. Add a stack to our image as well. Rename the stack. Then we're going to give it some padding. 60 above. And then adjust the height. And make sure our image is fill as well. And then we can give our stack that is containing the image a max width so that it doesn't go past 1200 pixels. That will make sure our image is responsive. Then we're going to add some text below our image. Put the text into a stack. Change the width and the height to fit content. And then we'll copy over our container as well and put it in this section. And then drag and drop the text into there as well. We'll remove our hero text like so. And then we can see some of our text isn't fitting in there properly. So we need to fix this. And the way we fix this is by adding a width to our text layer. And now we can start styling text. We can add a heading to our text here. One of the headings, one of the textiles that we already have. And same with the text underneath. We'll apply a body to this one. This body text definitely needs some adjusting though. So we're going to adjust the line height because there's too much gap between the lines. Change the color and then center align it. And then this is still a bit too wide. So let's adjust the width of the container. We'll adjust it to 940. There we go, looking much better. Now let's add some padding. We'll add 60 above. And then we'll also add a gap to our container. Then we're going to copy and paste that section for our next section of this page, which will be the job board. Put some text in there, like so, current openings. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put in the skeleton of our job board. We'll add a stack. call it job link. So we have the role, the sort of part of the company, whether it's remote, and then we'll also have an arrow as well, because this will link out to the job. We'll then add a stack to our three text elements. We'll change the direction to horizontal. Change the width to fill. Choose space between the elements inside the job link. Choose fit content for height as well. Then we're going to add a max width to our job link. We'll add a max width of 600 for now. We might adjust that later on. Change the direction of the job text. Make sure the width is set to fill. 
and then change the distribution to start. We'll again change the height as well to fit content. Now we can start styling our link card. So we're going to add a white background, add a radius, add some padding, change the font size of our text, Change the gap as well. Add a subtle shadow to our job link. Add a border as well. I'm going to adjust the padding again to have more padding left and right compared to the top and bottom. We'll adjust some of the text again. And then what I'd recommend doing early on in the project is to also add color styles. Like we added text styles, you can also add color styles. So if you know you're going to reuse some colors throughout your project, I'd recommend doing this here. You don't have to keep copy and pasting the colors, working out what colors you used. Having color styles is very, very useful. So you can see here, I've added the dark slate color style because I know I'm going to use this. I'm also going to add another one here for a lighter gray. We're going to call this one slate. And then throughout the project, I'll usually add other color styles as well that I know I'm going to frequently use. We'll make the job title semi-bold, same with the arrow. And then we'll add some padding to the bottom of our current openings section. And then I actually ended up changing the radius of our job link to six and then we can copy that job link multiple times. And that is our job board. We'll add a stack to our job board. Call it job board, of course. And then make sure our job board, the width is fill and the height is fit content. Now we can change the gap for our job board as well to 20. And we can remove the text between the current openings and our job links. Yeah, that looks great. That is our about page ready to go. We can also make sure that it's responsive on mobile and tablet. We can see here, we do need to make some adjustments very quickly. We'll change the height of the about us image to fit content. Add some padding either side. Adjust the max width too, and we'll do the same for the mobile version too. Sometimes the changes might not trickle down to the phone version. So what I end up doing here is I end up deleting the phone breakpoint and then just adding it again. We can see our heading text here isn't being responsive. So we do need to fix that. Make sure it's set to fill like so. And we're doing it on the desktop version here, so it trickles down to our phone version. Same with the section heading here, we're building software. Again, change the fill. Adjust the breakpoint font sizes for our current opening section here. We'll adjust the padding for our hero image, bring it up a little bit, like so. And then we do also need to adjust the job listings on the mobile version too. So we'll start with the desktop version. We'll add some padding above and below. And then what I end up doing here is adding some textiles to our job link elements so that they will be responsive so that they'll look better on tablet and mobile. So I'll delete the other job links. We'll also adjust the padding very quickly again. 
And then what we'll do is we'll actually make this job link a component. What you can do here is because this has multiple elements, you can make these multiple elements customizable. So you can see here, I'm making the brand designer a variable and then I can give it a name. I can give it the job title name and then the default is brand designer. I can also have a placeholder if I like. And then I'm going to do the same for the job category and the job location. And now when we copy our job link, we can select it and we can start changing the job title, the job category, the job location without actually having to change the element itself. It keeps the styling. All we're doing is changing the text. And there we are. That is our about page ready to go. Next up, we'll do the contact page. And this one is going to be fairly easy. We're just going to quickly change the text for our contact page and remove some of the sections that we don't need. And then what we're going to do is we're going to insert Framer's pre-built contact form and it works right out of the box. It's very easy to use. Drag and drop it in. And there is our contact form. Now we can start styling it a little bit. We'll remove the background. We'll remove the text because we don't need the text. We'll adjust the padding for this. 40 above, zero below. Then we'll select the form itself and we can start styling it. So we'll go to input, we'll change the color of the input to white. We'll change the color of the send button to our dark slate color. We'll change the gap to 10. And that's it, that is our contact form ready. Next up, we're going to add a frequently asked questions section. So we'll remove the job listings. And again, we'll use Framer's pre-built frequently asked questions section. We'll remove the background, we'll adjust the padding, we'll change the text, add our own styling to it. And then change the color of the frequently asked elements. We can just double click into it, unlink and replace all. And then in here, because it's a component, we can just start adjusting the colors of it. We'll change the background color to white. We'll adjust the fonts as well. So we'll select our font elements, change the color of them, use the dark slate color that we have, and then choose slate for the answers and change the font weight to regular. Choose one of our styling elements, textiles, and again, we'll do the same for the answer as well. I don't like the radius here and I also feel like it needs some shadow. So I'm going to select the variant itself and change the radius to 10. And then I can also add a subtle shadow. And that looks a lot better. And now if we preview this, we can actually see it work straight away. So no having to build this all yourself, Framer has it pre-built, all ready to go, just makes our life a lot easier. We'll change the gap between the frequently asked questions section title and the actual questions themselves, and we'll make sure it's responsive to. We'll adjust some padding on the mobile and tablet versions. On the tablet version, we'll make it 60 padding top, and on the mobile version, we'll make it 40 padding. Actually, we'll go with 50 padding top. We'll adjust the padding left and right as well so that it fills up more of the screen. 20 either side for the contact form and the frequently asked questions. And there we are. That is our contact page ready to go with a form that works straight away. And we also have a frequently asked questions section where it works straight away as well using Framers components. Looks fantastic.